All right, cool. Let's do this. Woo yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Ronald, and this is my channel. You should already know this is my channel because I'm on here. I'm on here. God dang it. All right, so let's get into this video. We already know you want to keep up with learning as a software engineer. What that actually means, and how do I do it? You know, ten years in experience doing programming and experience, and yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I think this is a really big thing and, you know, you always got to be continuously learning as a software engineer. So now let's like really answer that question and figure that out because, you know, people have different perceptions on how to do this. But this essentially is my way on how I keep up with things. First off, the first point I like to put up is like how I do it is. You know, I do personal projects. Personal projects, I believe, is probably one of the top ways of how to, you know, keep up with all this software stuff. So, like, if you have a particular technology that you're trying to learn or a particular tool you're trying to use, and I think of all these things or technologies as tools, so you got to know and figure out how to use that tool. So, you know, personal projects is probably one of the number one ways if, if you can figure it out. You just essentially, and how I figure out how to do it is, like, if I have a particular idea or I have a particular language I'm trying to learn I try to find some kind of application for that tool and so I figure out all right this is my idea and let me try to build it out and let me break these things and down to features and if the features are you know pretty reasonable to do I try to break it down uh, in even smaller features you know I try to bring something together that will you know be able to be in small chunks and you know build it out so I kind of like looking at that kind of aspect. So like if I was like doing real dev work and doing real engineering work, I kind of try to solution it out little by little and try to figure out how to do it as I'm learning that tool. So personal projects is definitely number one. The other way I like to do it is attaining certifications. So certifications, and you guys may already know, I'm a Salesforce software engineer. So I do a lot of Salesforce implementation on the Salesforce platform, do a lot of backend and integrations type work. But one of the things I think that was really important that actually really propelled me and give me a fundamental understanding of the platform is attaining certification in Salesforce. So I have a couple of Salesforce certifications and these things are really vital for the things that I do in the particular things in the areas that I worked in. And I kind of try to really focus on that is like getting certifications in the areas that I work in and be very specific on exactly what I want to learn. And I think that's so pivotal into why you should be doing that because you want to you not just get any type of certification or just get a wide range of certification if you're not actually using that particular like area so i try to focus on that and attaining certifications allow me to you know get around that and be able to solution things way better and more effectively and so another thing of course and i think one of the things and the, this is probably like the last bit of how i do it is data structures and algorithms so data structures and algorithms is just a fundamental concept for the area that i'm working in so i do a lot of back-end type stuff you got to be able to write scalable solutions and things that will be able to scale over time and data structures and algorithms and be able to practice that is probably one of the fundamental things that you can do as a back in engineer when you're writing a lot of logic so you know learn the time and complexity and the space complexity things have when you're implementing in that particular tour of logic that you're trying to write in that particular programming language is so important and i want to like stress that and i do that by just you know um, lead code problems i think it's like hacker rank as well I haven't used that recently did that for a coding review but yeah that is that let's get into the next segment of this particular video is like when do you decide when it's too much because i think I think people don't really talk about this because they think I'm always constantly like coding and figuring out and trying to do stuff. In actuality, I'm not. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I take breaks all all the time and I do other things that I like to do outside of code. And I definitely got videos on the things I like to do on my channel. If it gets to the point where it feels like a chore, it's like you're doing it wrong. And that's the point that I really want to make is like if it feels like a chore, of course you gotta do your chores and run a house. You gotta, you know, pull up your your clothes, you gotta pull up put up your 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 trash and you gotta sweep the floor and stuff like that. You know, those things, you know, you can do um constantly so like there's some things that you have to do in software and there's some things you, sometimes you don't have to do um, sometimes you don't have to constantly just learn every single thing about it and it continues to span when it's not needed and if it feels like a chore 
then it's not going to stick to you more likely. You don't have like a emotional connection to that particular knowledge and it'll just go away. And you were like, oh yeah, um, I did read about that, but it didn't really stick to me. Didn't use it or anything like that. So when it gets like a chore, you know, stop doing what you're doing, do what you want to do. That is fun. That will not feel like a chore, you know, have fun with it. So remember that. And then also when you continue to get frustrated with like particular areas, it's okay to say, all right, I understand that I'm not figuring out this area, you know, take a break, take a break and know that you can come back to it. And more than likely, that's, that's sometimes when I have the best ideas is when I'm doing something else. I'm like washing dishes or something like that. Actually, that will actually solve my problem that I was having earlier. So let me get into it. I probably drop everything I do and go and try to solve it. Or I was like, all right, I'm just going to write it down, get to it when I get to it. So there, and this also happened times, which goes into my next segment of this video is how to get back into it. So like whenever I'm done with like coding, I take a long hiatus from it or whatever like that yeah might maybe maybe my, my github is not showing that accurately because i do do some coding outside of it like with my private repository i think it only shows my republic public repository stuff so i'm coding some day i kind of remember this one quote you only give it like 80 percent of your your energy of it so like if you're really pushing yourself only give eight percent and if you can think of it like this it's like are you really willing to push something to 100% all the time. If you are doing that, then more likely that thing is going to like burn out and it's going to fail and you're going to get burned out. So don't push yourself to 100%. More likely you're going to overheat and you're going to burn out and you go blow some pistons or piston um piston rings and stuff like that car enthusiasts and stuff yeah it's okay to take short or extended breaks and you know get back into it because it's okay to reflect on what you're learning or what you learn and then like kind of repurpose of like what you're trying to learn your path of learning it's so important because like a job might tell you might you want to do this kind of thing you need to do this thing but more importantly you know exactly what you want to do and you need to be able to push yourself on what you need to learn and so that's going to be really important and be able to schedule that time out sometimes a job is not telling you what you need to learn or they're telling you what you need to learn and sometimes that doesn't like push you in the right direction that you want to go and you have to do this learning on your own it's probably one of the reasons why i left like some of my jobs in the past is because of that it's like i wanted to learn this i wanted to do this and i wasn't learning that so I went somewhere else because I wanted to learn specifically where I wanted to learn. All right. So, and lastly, you know, when you get back into it, you kind of go into this loop again, you know, but at the same time, you know, break things down again, but more importantly, reward yourself when you hit those milestones. And I think I'm trying to like kind of learn this as I'm going right now is beforehand, I used to hit a lot of milestones and hit a lot of milestones and then I take extended breaks and stuff. And the reason why I took extended breaks is because I feel like it was like anti climactic when I got to the final goal. I get there, but I don't reward myself on, you know, as I'm going through the journey. And I think that's really important is um, be able to reward yourself. And I'm learning that now is that, you know, I'm rewarding myself every time I hit these particular milestones, even though I had this long term goal. I have short-term goals and milestones that I'm hitting to that long-term goal. Hopefully that helps. You know, this is the end of this video. Hope you like that video. Give us a like, share, and subscribe. If you found some value, you know, share this with your friend. And then until next time, peace. <laughs>